Roy Gardner committed multiple escape attempts and stole more than $350,000 in cash and securities. He is thought to be the most hunted man in Pacific Coast history. Newspapers in the West called him the Smiling Bandit, the Male Train Bandit, and the King of the Escape Artists. He had a $5,000 reward on his head three times in less than a year. Welcome back. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to the Past Crimes channel and leave a comment below to let us know what other past crimes you would like to hear about. Roy Gardner was raised in Colorado Springs, Colorado, after being born in Trenton, Missouri, on January 5, 1884. He was described as being just under six feet tall, with short, auburn hair and blue eyes. He spent his formative years as a drifter in the Southwest, where he picked up minor and farrier skills. He allegedly enlisted in the American Army, but deserted in 1906 and wandered off to Mexico. Around the time of the Mexican Revolution, Gardner started out as a gunrunner. Before being apprehended by soldiers from Victoriano Huerta's army and being sentenced to death by firing squad, he smuggled and traded weapons and ammunition to the forces of Venustiano Carranza. On March 29, 1909, he and three other American prisoners broke out of the Mexico City jail after attacking the soldier guards. Gardner returned home and started competing as a prize fighter in the Southwest. He was skilled enough to spar with heavyweight champion J.J. Jeffries in Reno, Nevada during the summer of 1910 at the Bend Training Camp. Gardner eventually made it to San Francisco, where he lost all of his winnings from boxing on gambling before robbing a jewelry shop on Market Street. He was detained and spent some time in San Quentin, but after saving a prison guard's life during a riot, he was released on parole. After getting married and having a daughter, he then found work as an acetylene welder at the Mare Island Navy Yard. In 1918, he quit and started his own welding business. Gardner lost all of his money while on a business trip to Mexico at the racetracks in Tijuana. The following night, April 16, 1920, he robbed a U.S. mail truck outside of San Diego, making off with about $80,000 in cash and securities. The job went off without a hitch, but three days later he was caught burying his loot. For the armed robbery, he received a 25-year sentence at the McNeil Island Federal Penitentiary, but he vowed he would never serve it. He was being transported by train on June 5, 1920, along with Deputy U.S. Marshals Kavanaugh and Haig. He shouted, look at that deer, as he peered out of the train window somewhere outside Portland, Oregon. When the officers turned to look, Gardner took Haig's gun out of his holster, disarmed Kavanaugh, handcuffed the two of them, and stole $200. He jumped off the train and made his way to Canada. The following year, he sneaked back into the U.S. and began operating as a lone bandit across the country, robbing banks and mail trains. On May 19, 1921, on his way back to California, he held up the mailman on train number 10 heading east from Sacramento and stole $187,000 from the express car. The next day, he warned the mailman of train number 20 to throw up his hands or he would blow his head off. He ran down the tracks carrying a bundle of mail as the train approached the Overland Limited at Roseville. The gunman was identified by the home office as Roy Gardner, the train thief who had a $5,000 reward placed on his head. Gardner was apprehended by federal agents while he was playing cards in a pool hall after being recognized at the Porterhouse Hotel. For the armed robbery of the mail trains, he was given a further sentence of 25 years at McNeil Island. He promised to lead Southern Pacific Railroad detectives to the location of his hidden loot in an effort to get his sentence reduced. I guess I have forgotten where I buried that money, Gardner said after the officers had searched but found nothing. He was once again taken to McNeil Island by U.S. Marshals Mulhall and Wrinkle, two quick-shooting veterans, after being heavily shackled and given an Oregon boot. Gardner requested to use the restroom while they were traveling, where one of his friends had earlier concealed a .32 caliber pistol. 
When Gardner exited the restroom, he pointed the gun at Mulhall and gave another prisoner the order to handcuff the two police officers to the seat. Before boarding another moving train outside of Castle Rock, Washington, he stripped the officers of their weapons and money. After this, the largest manhunt in Pacific Coast history got underway. Gardner was characterized as a dangerous man who would shoot at first opportunity and needed to be apprehended immediately. He once again had a $5,000 bounty on his head. When he arrived in Centralia, Washington, Jack Shuto at the Olympic Club almost recognized him. Gardner told the Oxford Hotel staff that he had suffered severe burns in an industrial accident close to Tacoma while covering his face with bandages to conceal his identity and leaving one eye slit. Officer Louis Sani and proprietor Gertrude Howell grew suspicious of the bandaged man. When Sonny saw a gun in Gardner's hotel room, he accused Gardner of being the smiling bandit. Gardner attempted to retaliate, but was restrained, and a medical professional removed the bandages and identified him. He was finally taken to McNeil Island while heavily chained and received another 25-year sentence. After spending six weeks in prison, Gardner persuaded Lawardus Bogart and Everett Impen that he had paid off the tower guards. When someone hit a fly ball into center field in the fifth inning of a prison baseball game on Labor Day, September 5, 1921, he yelled, Now, while the guards in the towers were keeping an eye on the ball and the runners. He, Bogart, and Impen ran 300 yards to a high barbed wire fence where Gardner then cut a hole. While being shot at, the three men then ran to a pasture. Gardner was hit in his left leg, but managed to escape by hiding behind a herd of cattle close to some trees. He saw Bogart fall, severely hurt. Gardner told us those fellows in the towers couldn't hit the broadside of a barn, Impen said as he was being shot to death. Later, Bogart claimed that Gardner had tricked them and used his friends as decoys to increase his chances of escaping. Gardner lived in the prison barn, drinking milk from the cows, and then swam to Fox Island, where he thrived on fruit from the orchards, despite the guards searching the beaches and seizing every boat along the shoreline. Gardner had left McNeil Island by the time Warden Maloney claimed he was still there. Before he was apprehended by a mail clerk during a train robbery in Phoenix in the fall of 1921, Gardner, who was now the most wanted criminal, had committed a number of crimes in Arizona. He was yet again given a sentence of 25 years to be served at Leavenworth Federal Prison. Leavenworth will never hold me, Gangster Gardner boasts, according to headlines. Gardner, now referred to as the King of the Escape Artists, was transferred to Atlanta Federal Prison in 1925, which at the time was the harshest prison in the nation. He attempted to tunnel under the wall the following year and saw through the bars of the shoe store. Then, in 1927, he organized a prison break during which he held the captain and two guards hostage while brandishing two revolvers. However, the escape attempt was unsuccessful, and he was sentenced to 20 months in solitary confinement. He was admitted to a mental hospital in Washington, D.C. when he was finally allowed to leave solitary confinement. The warden referred to Gardner as the most dangerous prisoner in the history of Atlanta prison in 1929, the same year he started a hunger strike to protest the food in the facility and made threats to commit suicide. In 1934, he was moved to Alcatraz, where he became one of the first notorious criminals to be housed there. Al Capone was in Alcatraz at the same time as Gardner, and according to legend, Capone was once struck by an object thrown by an unnamed prisoner, but Gardner moved Capone out of the way, and the only injury was to the arm. Gardner's wife filed for divorce while he was imprisoned in Alcatraz. Together with Ralph Rowe, he oversaw the match shop where they also planned an escape. However, Gardner's clemency request was granted, and he was paroled and released in 1938. In 1939, Gardner published his autobiography, titled Alcatraz. He worked as a tour guide on a boat that circled Alcatraz Island after being released on parole. In a hotel room in San Francisco on January 10, 1940, 
Gardner wrote four notes. He attached one of them to the door and warned, do not open door. Poison gas. Call police. He locked the door from the inside before putting cyanide in a glass of acid and inhaling the poisonous fumes.